Ron, you guys have had some hardships on the offensive line, and yet you've kept it moving like uh, nothing's happened. What's been the key to just plug and play? Uh, the guys that we have, uh, the, the group collectively, you know, we got guys that's got a lot of experience, that's uh, got a lot of starts under their belt, and uh, they're just ready to play. They're ready and willing. Um, dual training and, well, I mean, not even dual, just multiple spots, just staying ready and knowing the assignment of the entire O-line to be able to come in and play. You know, is it as easy as you guys have made it look because it seems seamless to the to the naked eye? No, I, 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 it's, it's tough. It's, it's difficult. It's a testament to, to so like a, a huge, you know, tip of the hat to those guys that's able to do it, especially at multiple positions. I've never played um, dual positions since I've been in the league. So, but just to know multiple spots and playing with different hands down, different stances, all that type of stuff, I'm pretty sure it has to be difficult. You know, this Tennessee team's coming in um, eight and six, still looking for the playoffs. And Coach Payton says, you know, they do some funky things pressure-wise. Yeah. Uh, and you guys had had a lot of experience playing against them, you know, mm -hmm. every, once every four years. Just what are some of the things you've seen for that defense? Uh, a bunch of odd looks. Um, they get up, they put a lot of DBs and linebackers on the field. Um, they got they got guys that are, are comfortable uh, blitzing and rushing the passer and also dropping the coverage. A guy like Kenny Vicaro that we had here for a long time. My, my boy I was drafted with, but um, he does a really good job of getting after the passer, and uh, they use him in a lot of different situations. And yet you guys seem pretty comfortable offensively, especially the last couple of games, averaging 40 points and, and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you guys are kind of finding the rhythm that you were looking for? Uh, we're just trying to improve. We're just trying to improve, uh, focus on situational football, third down, red zone, uh, eliminate the negative plays, the things that's been setting us back, penalties, and uh, – I think when we do those things, we're hard to stop. Three. Brian, uh, I'm just curious, too, you guys playing Bacaro again, seeing who's in this locker room for a long time. But from what you've seen out of him, how do you feel like he's still playing and, and what type of element do you feel like? Because he's a little versatile. Things yeah, like extremely versatile, um, highly active at all times, disruptive. And uh, those are the things you see on film still in Tennessee. Um, I can tell they value him because they move him around quite a bit and then they use him, they use his strengths. Is there, and of course, at this time of the year, right, when you had the one seed locked up, that's, of course, would have been a, a positive. But from the standpoint of, like, motivation and staying locked in, like, can it be a positive to still be fighting for something to hit rhythm as you're going into the playoffs? Does, does that make sense at all? Yeah, I get, I get what you're asking. I think it's never a point where we wouldn't be fighting for something. Um, I think we're... We have to, we, we can never get content or comfortable with whatever our situation is. Even if we had the one spot locked up, there's still a ton of work we had to do that we have to do in order to get ready for this playoff run. This, this NFC side is, is stacked, you know, from a fan, from me looking at it from a fan perspective, a lot of really good teams. So we got to do everything we can to get ready for that.